in which our polity dictates seven deacons rotate off of our board and then seven come onto our board. And so we welcome back to the deacon board Steve Borders, that's Steve and Cindy Borders, we have two Steve Borders in the church, Eddie Green, Mark Patterson, and Mark Binion, and then we add as new deacons to the board Derek Allen and Grayson Pierce and John Blanton. And I've asked uh, Derek and Grayson and John uh, to come up and to share with us, to share with the church family what this day means to them as God has called them to a new place of service. So as the three of them make their way up now, um, just it's, it, we're all serving the Lord together, and yet this is a very, very special day in which God has called them to a new place of service, and this is a, a position that goes back to the very roots of Christianity, as you see in the, gospel, or in the New Testament, in the epistles, uh, the conversation that comes up frequently about pastors and deacons and elders. And so the role you have is a very important one. And let me just, if you'll share just in alphabetical order, so Derek, if, if you would go first, and Grayson and John, if you want to just sit down, and I'll come on over here. Thank you. His uh, remarks earlier, he said, oh, wait a second, I've got to find him. I said, well, if you can't find him, we'll just pull out a hymn and you can sing a hymn for the congregation instead. So he made sure he knew where they are now. So I got it. Um, first off, um, I'm honored and extremely humbled to be standing before you this morning. Um, for anybody that doesn't know me, I'm Derek Allen, and I've been married to my wife, Laura, for the past five years. I can't look at her because she's going to make me cry. Um, we have a son named Austin. He's 15 months old, and he's so precious. We love him to death. Um, being elected to serve as a church deacon is very special to me. Elizabeth Baptist Church has always held a special place in my heart. EBC has always been my home church, and our church family has always felt to me like an extension of my own family. So many members of this congregation have played an important role in my spiritual growth whether it was when I was a child in children's Sunday school, mission friends, RAs, vacation Bible school, Bible drill, or even children's choir, hearing Mike teach us all about Fanny J. Crosby and her famous hymns and gospel songs, whether it was my teenage years when I was actually involved in the youth group or during my adult years, so many of you at EBC have impacted my spiritual growth in so many ways. I became a born-again Christian when I was in the third grade, I'll try to get it together. Third grade, spring of 1992. It was a Tuesday night in April, and I was sitting in one of the front pews right there. Beside my, beside my mom. And we were listening to our pastor. Pastor Jeff Brindle preach, and it was during church revival. I promise this is the hardest part. I felt the Holy Spirit that night, and I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that I was ready to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior and to ask for forgiveness of my sins. Now, 27 years later, I feel the Holy Spirit leading me as I prepare to embark on this new journey as a deacon of our church. Becoming a church deacon ultimately means that I'm being called to serve. This is a decision that I do not take lightly. I'm so very humbled that so many members of our congregation feel that I'm deserving of this opportunity to help lead our church in serving our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 1 Samuel 12, 24 says, but be sure to fear the Lord and serve him. Serve him faithfully with all of your heart. Consider what great things he has done for us. As a newly elected deacon, I pledge that I will uphold those words in 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 14. I will fear the Lord. I will serve him faithfully with all my heart. For consider what great things he has done for me. Thank you. I just want to take this opportunity to thank 
you as a congregation, and it's very humbling to have, be elected as a deacon. Uh, this is part of a journey that's been in my life. Uh, I'm reminded of the verse in Joshua as they were standing on the, uh, on the Jordan River ready to go into the promised land, and Joshua's knees were shaking a little bit, and God uh, encouraged him by saying uh, in verse 9, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. My story, my life's my story is one that I, the earliest memory I have is of my grandmother and uh, sitting at the kitchen table uh, listening to the Back to the Bible broadcast. And uh, their theme song was, uh, I Love to Tell the Story. And that set the tone for my life. I had a very loving Christian family. I was blessed with a great grandmother who uh, literally at her knee taught the precepts of God's word. You know, like all of us, where our, our stories are unique and our journeys are unique. And uh, our journey, my journey came through First Baptist Church here in Shelby where I was baptized when I was 11, when I accepted the Lord as my Savior, uh, my high school years, going off to college. And I think like maybe a lot of you, I spent some time in the far country as, as a prodigal. And, uh, but I kept hearing that, you know, I, I hit that bottom point where where you know that back at your father's house, even the servants were doing better than you. And I, 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 people loved me out of that. A great church in uh, Raleigh, uh, Forest Hills Baptist. And they were, they, the people there loved me out of that. I, I started work uh, in 1974, and I met this God provided this wonderful wife for me. We've been married since uh, 1976, 43 years. Uh, as she says, sometimes it seems longer. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's been a short time. We've got three great kids, three great adults, a daughter who uh, is a caregiver for autistic, an autistic uh, man and has a great heart for, for God and for, uh, for those who are left, maybe, maybe not have some kind of physical disability. I have a son who serves in the United States Army and a daughter who is uh, finishing up her third year of uh, pharmacy school. But our journey has come through rough times. 1995, I lost my job for 18 months. And I don't know how I got through that, except the love and support of a great church at First Baptist uh, Ashboro and uh, people praying us through that. And that, thing, that, that scripture that says God will provide was demonstrated time and time again. And we came back to Shelby in 97. And four years ago, we came here to Elizabeth seeking a deeper purpose and a deeper uh, call on our lives. And the, you folks have been so wonderful. So many people have impacted us, from Jesse Thackerson to uh, uh, Bob Reinhardt to others. And those, to, to a great Sunday school class with Joyce Rob, uh, Joy, the Joyce Roberts class, and, and Joyce and uh, Garner as our teacher. And I, I, it's such a great honor to be able to give back. And you know, that everybody has a story. And I used to think you had to sit down and give the, you know, the, 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 the four laws or whatever for to witness. But you know what we really need to do? Is we simply need to, to share the story that we each have of how God has been faithful in our lives that's the message of the gospel. And I thank you for you, you honoring me and, 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 and 
giving me the opportunity to serve as a deacon in your church, in this church. Thank you, and, and God bless each one of you. There's a few more of you out here this time. Um, good morning. For those of you that do not know me, uh, my name is Grayson Pierce. John 12, 26 says, For whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant will also be. My father will honor the one who serves me. First, let me say that it is a great opportunity for me to, to have been elected to serve you as Elizabeth Baptist Church. Elizabeth Baptist Church has been my home church for over 30 years. I can remember the first time I walked into the, the doors right here over on the side. Um, every major moment in my life, Elizabeth Baptist Church has been at the forefront. From being baptized at a young age, right behind us, um, to rededicating my life on a youth trip in Panama City, Florida, to marrying my beautiful wife right here on this stage, to dedicating my three children to the Lord right where I stand, um, and then on this day that my oldest son is becoming new to the pew, I'm getting uh, ordained. I didn't even realize that until I was talking to Pastor Ritt on Wednesday. Um, and he, sa he said, you know, it'd be great for your children to be in the service. And I said, well, Easton's going to be there anyway because he's new to the pew. And he just said, you know, Grayson, that's a God thing. We didn't plan that. Um, so everything that has been important to me has happened here. So I thank you for that. Um, and, and as I look out through the church today, the men of this church that were deacons when I, were, when I was growing up, they look a little bit different. Um, some better, some like fine wine, they age, <laughs> the better they get. Um, but I look out and, and I can't help but to think back on my life as, as I was growing up in a single parent household. It's, it's hard for a, a mother to teach her son how to be a man. My father was very involved in my life, but he lived in Georgia. Um, so it was, it was hard for him to teach me the day-to-day -day ways of being a man. What taught me how to be a man and what helped mold me were the men in this church. They don't even know the impact. Just the little things, that, the way they conducted themselves in, in the hallways of these churches, the way they conducted their fam with their families, the interaction with their children, has taught me how to interact with my children. The way that they love their wives unconditionally has taught me how to love my wife unconditionally. The way that they served the members of EBC has shown me how to serve now in this role as a deacon. From stopping by my house to give my mother a 15 minute break to play basketball with me and my brother to helping put mulch out in our front yard, to helping cut our grass. Just little things that they don't even realize had the biggest impact on my life. And it is my prayer that one day, one of our youth, my son, my sons, can stand where I am and say that I've done the same for them. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you for this opportunity to serve. I do not take it lightly. It is an honor, and I'm humbled to serve as a deacon for you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. And uh, if you'll come down to these chairs that are in front of the pulpit, and let me ask your wives and ladies, if you'll come and stand behind your husbands, if you'll come on out now and stand behind your husbands, we're going to have the laying on of hands. This is a tradition that goes all the way back to the Old Testament. And you gentlemen, you can be seated. Um, and this goes back to the Old Testament. Anytime someone was going to be set aside for the work of the Lord for a special purpose, 
the other leaders of the church would come and lay their hands on them. And so I'm going to ask now if all of the ordained deacons or pastors uh, that are in the congregation, if you'll stand up and if you'll come forward and you'll just get in front of these men and we're going to group together. And even if you've been ordained in another congregation, feel free to join us. But come forward and let's lay hands on these gentlemen and we'll have a time of prayer. So if you'll make your way up now. Stump, stump. <laughs> All right. Just kind of ahead and put a hand on the gentleman in front of you as you get a little bit closer. Make some more room for these gentlemen coming in. All right. I'm going to begin our time of prayer. And then if the rest of you will just pray as the Holy Spirit leads you. And then since we have our director of missions with us today, I'm going to ask Wesley if he will close our time of prayer. But let's, let's lift these men and their families up to the Lord now as we pray. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you so much for your Holy Spirit's presence in, in this place and in your congregation today. And Lord, I thank you for Derek and for John and for Grayson. I thank you for the commitment that they've made to you. And Lord, I pray that you would bless them, bless their homes. I thank you for their wives, the godly women that they are. And I thank you for the, the time that they will sacrifice so that their husbands will be able to serve you and your people in the various ways that you call them in the years ahead. And Lord, I pray that as they do serve you faithfully, that you would bless them with an extra measure of your Holy Spirit's power, that they would truly live as you have called them to live, and that in word and in deed, they would be an example of what it means to be a Christian. Thank you, Lord, for their service to you and to your people, and we gladly receive them onto the diaconate of EBC. Thank you. 
what you were doing in the life of this church, we ask, oh God, that you would continue, Lord, to draw all of them close to you. I pray that these men in particular this morning, God, would follow you in obedience, that they would put you in their, your proper place in their lives, which is first and above all. God, that they would follow you in obedience and in serving you, God, lead this church to do the same. <coughs> Father, we pray that you would give them the ability and faith to trust. God, give them the ability to guard their hearts. Father, may they feel and know and sense and be empowered by your Holy Spirit. Lord, that we have sung about today that has power. When I pray that the outside world would see and know this power and be drawn to you. Father, we thank you for your love, for your mercy, and for your grace that you've shown us in your precious Son, Jesus. And that we follow his example and humbly serve you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, and I'm going to ask if uh, Grayson and Lindsay and John and Betty Jean and Derek and Laura will come on up to the pulpit area. We have a presentation for them. And we're so very proud, and as has been mentioned in the prayers and in their remarks, you know, being called as a deacon or in any responsibility in the church is to be called to be a servant first and foremost of the Lord. We've been going through the book Nuts and Bolts of Deacon Ministry, uh, and in that book we've been talking about the head of the church is not the deacon board, the head of the church is not the pastor and the ministerial staff, the head of the church is not the congregation. The head of the church is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And as we keep our eyes on Him, and as we seek to honor Him, and we serve Him and one another, that's how we lead. You know, our leadership is an act of service. And um, Derek, we want to present to you your certificate. Each of them reads Certificate of Ordination, and then it has their name. Having been chosen as a person of good report, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, and capable of using the office well, was set apart publicly to the office and work of deacon, by the authority and order of Elizabeth Baptist Church, Shelby, North Carolina, on this 25th day of August, 2019. And then my signature and the signature of Mark Beam, who's our current deacon chair, is affixed to each of the certificates. Derek, thank you. We're proud of you. Very proud of you. John, thank you. We love you, brother. Grayson, thank you. Thank you for the service that you will render. And, and to each of your wives, as we said, um, this is a sacrifice on your part as well, as there will be times when your husbands are uh, serving the Lord, when you'd rather they be home doing something, you know, serving the family, you're going to give them up to serve God and to serve His people. And we thank you for all that you're doing uh, in having your husbands serve as deacons of EBC. Betty Jean. All right. Uh, I've got a 10-point sermon for you now. No. <laughs> Actually, um, yeah, that's one of the, the blessings for a congregation to have a former military pastor because I pay attention to time. Um, Shannon says maybe not as much as I should, but nonetheless, <laughs> we're going to go deeper. This is perfect timing for taking what we were talking about on Sunday morning and then continuing that conversation on Wednesday. So today, as we talk about serving the Lord, there are really three things I was going to hit with you. First, you have to serve the Lord with all your heart, from 1 Samuel chapter 12. Then, you have to serve the Lord with fear, that's from Psalm 2. And then, serve the Lord with gladness, Psalm 100. So, 1 Samuel 12, if you'll jot that down and read ahead, read 1 Samuel 12. This is your homework for Wednesday night. Get used to this. I'm going to kick some things out to you on Sunday mornings, and we're going to come back and talk about more on Wednesday. So 1 Samuel 12, serve the Lord with all your heart. Psalm 2, serve the Lord with fear. And then Psalm 100, serve the Lord with gladness. In the New King James Version, which is what's there in your pews, uh, when you run that phrase, serve the Lord with, 
It appears three times in the New King James Version, and those are the three times. And so we're going to talk about the coronation of Saul, the first king of Israel, and that ties in with 1 Samuel 12, serve the Lord with all your heart. And then the, cor the real coronation of the Messiah, Psalm 2, and that's going to be serve the Lord with fear. And then Psalm 100, a psalm of thanksgiving, to serve the Lord with gladness. You've got to serve the Lord with joy when you serve. And so come on back on Wednesday. We're going to talk about that a lot more. We're going to stand and we're going to sing our closing song. And our closing song, Living for Jesus. I'm sorry, that's 8.30 service. Um, come just as you are. And that's exactly what we want you to do. Some of you may feel that for whatever reason, uh, you can't serve. Let me tell you, that is a lie of the enemy. Um, the way that you start growing in your relationship with the Lord is to serve Him. And so, uh, as these deacons and their wives have, have reflected that example, follow in that example, and as we sing this song, you respond to the Holy Spirit. And then I'm going to ask you as well, at the close of the service, if you'll be prepared to join Shannon and me out front so everybody can congratulate you as well.